Hey guys, today we are talking about the brand new Nikon D5500 consumer entry level premium DSLR. Uh, it's an upgrade of the very popular D5300, but then it's not a revolutionary successor. It's more like an uh, you know incremental update. The main difference between the D5500 and the D5300 is that D5500 now got a touch screen. It become much lighter at about 420 gram compared to the 480 gram of the D5300. It has got more than 30% battery life than the D5300. Uh, That's one of the more, uh, you know, very, very important thing. And Nikon is really, really emphasizing on the battery life. That's a very good thing. It also is um, slightly smaller than the D5300. And then it has got flat profile because Nikon's, again, giving more important to a flat profile that has um, you know, it has flat profile across its uh, newer full frames and now it's bringing them to the crop sensor as well. So, uh, you see a typical golden color box, the Nikon D5500. And here you have some of the marketing information and such. So, just gonna go open the box here and on top you'll find the manual and warranty card and all. There's no CD this time here at least with our review unit you have the wall charger and then the adapter pin there depending on your country you have the strap and then the AV cable you have the data transfer cable and Nikon still has not migrated to a micro USB 2.0 cable unfortunately and then you have that's the battery you see Mm. Lee ion battery there ENEL 14A 1230mAh battery and then finally we have our body the Nikon D5500 it's a very very small body it's smaller than the D5300 significantly visibly and only slightly bigger than the Canon 100D so there you see that's the Nikon D5500, it's very very small and it's light at 420 gram. It's in fact so light, it's actually lighter than my Galaxy Tab S here which is in turn one of the lightest tablets in the world. So this is crazy light, 420 grams as against 480 grams of the D5300. It's almost of the same size of the Canon 100D which is kind of the smallest DSLR um, in the world, just about taller and a little more meat here and there so basically uh, it's definitely not made of metal it's more like a composite you know material very tough plastic plus metal composite material is what fiber basically it's what Nikon calls it so this is quite tough and rugged it's very small so only about three if your hands are like smaller like small like me then it will only accommodate about three fingers and then you can have one finger here that's how i keep it okay it's very like an amazing grip in it almost like the grip of the d750 kind of you know just thinner a bit gives you enough finger rooms here let's check out the buttons and other stuff you have your sensor there it's an aps-c sensor 24 uh, mp and then you have your contact points and lens that's uh, the infrared point for your remote and then you have your autofocus assist lamp here the lens release button the fn button the flash trigger button and then you have your drive mode button around here on top here you have your shutter release button that's how you switch on and off there is no lcd panel here so there is no you know light for the lcd panels because otherwise on a more pro grade body you also have another mode here where you can swing it even here and then the lcd panel uh, will light up you have a dedicated video button there and then the exposure compensation scale which also acts as aperture in combination with this dial when you're in the full manual mode and then that's the lone command dial there then your shooting mode it has the usual shooting modes plus the fx and scene and total auto mode and all and that's that lever is the live view lever and then you have your accessory hot shoe your stereo mics there there's the flash if i do this it'll pop up that's usual stuff speaker there's the sensor 
in the sense of mark there and then your metal eyelid for your lanyard on the back side or the big improvement the screen is articulated like the d5300 but now it's a touch screen we're going to show those to you and it has a capacity of touch screen so it's very very responsive um again your uh, ir uh, to use the remote from the back and then your menu button the viewfinder and it also has gained is also a new thing an eye sensor which senses that whenever you're trying to when whenever your face basically comes closer to the camera it knows that you're probably trying to look to the viewfinder yeah, if the lcd is on then it's going to switch that off automatically it's already there in many mirrorless cameras but it's good to see that it's coming to the dslr as well your adapter contact point info buttons and some of the other usual buttons. the buttons are quite small but i don't mind because my fingers are that way but then if you have a big fingers and big hand then you might find a little difficult pressing this button because they are really really tiny this way oh, let's see what it has so once you open the flap there you see that's for the remote and then your mic and that's how you i think this goes to avr that's the av out and does not have you have an external mic point but does not have a headphone jack to monitor the sound here you have the mini hdmi port and then the lone sd hc and sd xc card slot you have a tripod contact point and the battery slot there so that's about it that's about the camera and we have the 18 to 140 here let's just open this whoops and it's gonna go around here white contact point white contact point and then the lens is actually heavier than the camera amazing grip and it's you see it just lights up yeah then i quickly show you the user interface now to show that i need to switch on the live view and typically do that information it can show you can also toggle the information that you want to see in a menu and that's uh, the full menu and it pretty much stays the same so nothing too oh nothing too new that i want to show you some things changes for example uh what you have that iso sensitivity settings now where interestingly the minimum iso stays at 100 but the max goes up to 25 6 uh, 25 600 and 25 600 now is not an extended iso it's kind of a native iso right now so which is great you have your vignette uh, control and your auto distortion control and then you have your playback menu shooting menu custom settings setup and other stuff and when you're in the playback mode let's see that's one of our long exposure photos with this yeah so that's your playback the i will bring up uh, any menu that's related to that particular um that particular menu for example if i'm on a playback menu then the i will bring up things related to what you can do with the playback menu and that's the benefit of a touch screen it's so amazing and it's so so silky smooth you can just go like this yeah not only that you can actually Check out all menu items just by touching out there but it's more like a habit thing you know now i've been using a full frame and i really i do not have a habit of using a touch screen but at times specifically when you're shooting videos to change the autofocus that's a great great deal and that single fact might be a deal maker for the d5500 here now coming to the important point let's talk about the performance of the d5500 the system overall is snappy and responsive thanks to the capacitive touchscreen navigating is very easy and intuitive as well the autofocus performance via viewfinder is fast enough with 39 total af points out of which nine are cross type uh, the d5500 has a touchscreen that increases the otherwise quite clumsy live view autofocus accuracy particularly helpful in a low light scenario the autofocus motor of the kit lenses still make audible noise despite of having afs motor that is autofocus silent motor the saturation and hue are proper 
although right out of the box the raw files are one shade about one shade lighter in contrast but that's expected also as usual you will see slightly warmer tone in nikon brilliant dynamic range the 24 mp sensor has very good dynamic range for a APS-C sensor you can see the photographs i have provided here one was normal exposure and i deliberately underexposed the other the darker one then see how much of the detail I could recover. You might want to compare the recovered image with the normally exposed one, uh, you know, for comparison's sake. The low light performance, that is the ISO performance, is brilliant to say the least. Even at ISO 6400, we can use the pictures very decent, especially online. 12,800 and 25,600 are mass, avoid them. I would ideally keep my auto ISO on with minimum at 100 and maximum uh, not beyond 3200. The metering is good. We mainly tested the matrix metering which takes an average exposure of the frame and the camera could properly expose photos even in uh, some really complicated scenes. I found the auto white balance to be slightly on the colder side but overall it was giving out quite close to natural WB tones in each different modes. The D5500 records 60p at full HD that's 1080p which something even the D7200 does not do. At 60p, the videos are very sharp, particularly in the center with slight fuzziness at the edge. The color rendition is fine. We did not see any moire or exposure jump. So that's really good. So then now, should you buy the Nikon D5500? Now, more importantly, I should ask you if you already have a Nikon D5300 or maybe even 5200 or maybe a, um, I mean, you know, a, a other camera, a mirrorless, or whatever do you think that it actually worth upgrading or skipping your model to get to nikon here well i would say there are different kind of answers here see this is a great camera because this guy inherits some of the very very strong points of nikon the 24 mp um, sensor sony sensor which is a great amazing dynamic range it also has um, APS-C sensor, which all of these uh, you know, entry-level DSLR has. And then it also has X-Speed 4 uh, image processing engine, which kind of gives you uh, that noise-free images under low light. Also, this guy's got a touch screen now. So Nikon consumer cameras finally are very, very video grade. Because you know, uh, this guy still has a contrast detection, um, you know, autofocus system in the live view, not like the Canon. So, you know 70d or 70 70 mark 2 so the touch screen really really helps because you do not need to go um, you know rotating your lens and rotating you know adjusting a focus and you can just touch on your subject and it's gonna focus there it's still contrast detection so it's still slower though uh, eye sensors and all those stuff became much smaller and one of the most important thing I found personally is the battery life. It's a great battery life. Only carry one extra. You can actually virtually go to any vacation, any week long vacation, and it's not going to dry out in the day. So, that's those are the good things. Uh, there are not many bad things. What I say is um, still not got 4K. In consumer levels, we are uh, watching 4Ks more and more uh, onto the mask. Now, even the GoPros has 4K. Yeah. So, that's an action camera. Fine. But, uh, yeah, some of the mirrorless have 4Ks like GH4 and even NX1, but they are more expensive. Still, the DSLRs do not have 4K till now. Apart from that, uh, it's small so far and the buttons are small. So for the biggest of fingers, there might be some difficulty. Plus the biggest thing is that it's not a revolutionary upgrade. So if you already own a D5300 and even probably a D5200, most of the critical points remain the same on the 5500 and it's mainly the peripheral features which are an upgrade like the touch screen and eye sensors and flat profile and stuff. Uh, if you have money, of course, you go ahead and buy this to a great body. It's going to last you very, very long. But if you own a D5300 or uh, a D5200 or on a very, very tight budget, and only could afford let's say the d5500 plus the 1855 lens i would say you skip the 1855 and get the 18140 with maybe the d5300 if you're on a very very tight budget but if you can extend that budget this whole kit look beautiful all the kits are good but this one is my favorite and also the most expensive of course 
but the 18 140 autofocus is real real fast it's an amazing amazing lens so that's about the d5500 if you like this video please hit the like button ask anything related to the d5500 and we're gonna answer them all and please subscribe to our channel and share this video to share the love ciao